as well as the Captain Rex Y-Wing Microfighter, which I did pick up June 1st, the other set was the new Battle Pack. I'm a big fan of Battle Packs, and actually, I'm a big fan of Phase 2 Clone Trooper minifigures, Jedi, and Mandalorians. I think they really are the big three in my collection. So, this was a must-have. Not only does it come with two cool Mandalorians, I know we'll get into the minifigures in a second, but we also get some Imperial Commandos, which look really, really cool. And speaking about the UTS sets and how the exclusive minifigures always on the top, it made me think about the other sets. How do LEGO decide which minifigure gets put on top? And I do think they choose their favourite, sort of a star minifigure. I'm pretty sure the Kaminoan was on top for Kenobi Starfighter. We've got the Imperial Commando on top now. And it really is the star minifigure of this set. But before we get into this, I've been having some lovely conversations with a few people that have already joined the channel Discord. So be sure to check it out if you do want to talk about these sets in greater detail than the comments. And you might already be able to see Captain Rex has taken his place right at the top. I am now missing one Phase 2 2020 style clone trooper. And I'm desperately trying to get my hands on them for a reasonable price. But soon... We will have a complete collection, so be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this review and subscribe so you don't miss out when I get my hands on that clone. But now let's take a look at the brand new battle pack. And I think first up, the first part of this set we have to look at is the minifigures. We are getting four minifigures and you'll all be very happy to know that none of these are named troopers. I know named figures don't do well in battle packs. People prefer army builders, which does make sense when you look at all the sets we've already got we've got most of the named figures it would have been nice if perhaps they included some heads for the mandalorians representing a certain two characters and whilst the armor doesn't match up to cosca reeves and axe woves you can see on screen i do have shorts explaining how you can make them look closer to the characters and for most fans that will be enough but I really like the fact we've got two of each because I don't really see anyone spending this money for two of each of the Mandalorians. I think perhaps if they had a pure Imperial Commando battle pack, people would be more likely to spend. But I really like the four minifigures they've chosen, especially having two of the same. These Imperial Commandos are the exact same as each other and... Perhaps we'll take a look at them first. And as for all four minifigures in this set, we do get black heads. It's quite nice because Lego heads aren't that hard to come by, I don't think. So we can switch them up if we want, but there are no characters. They're meant to just be sort of nobodies underneath the helmet, which isn't the best thing for characters. But when they are just regular troopers, it helps to allow their identity to be whatever you want. We get a jump pack on the back of the trooper as well, which does sometimes make it a bit harder to stand up, but it's the same one we saw with the First Order Trooper with the one by one tile. In fact, let's take a look at that Trooper. And I've not only got that First Order, well, technically it's Final Order Jump Trooper. I also have a Rebel and a Trooper one from back in 2016, I think it was, when we got the Battlefront 2 Battle Packs, and I'm really liking the new Battle Pack a lot, lot more. I get that they're also meant to represent a slightly different Jump Packs. Although these jump packs here can be taken off and added to a Mandalorian minifigure, Din Djarin himself, because he does end up wearing one for quite a big chunk of the end of Season 3. So if you do end up taking one off, you will have an Imperial Commander without him, because as far as spare pieces go, we do get another one of the jetpack tiles, but they don't give us a spare jetpack. So I'm not sure if it's available outside of these sets. I don't think LEGO have the right to sell these Star Wars pieces separately, but it's also really nice we get an extra thermal detonator and the other pieces aren't anything special. But back to the figs, it's pretty much the same mold. There seems to be no obvious changes to the Final Order Trooper, except for the fact that, of course, this is in white and that is in red. Again, I don't really know if it's been made in white before, I'm not quite sure this is exclusive, but that helmet for the Imperial Commando does look really, really nice. And these figures can even be used in Rebels mocks. I get that they probably don't match up exactly to the animated troops, but they're close enough that they can definitely be whacked in a Rebels display. So perhaps I would have preferred getting four of these guys instead of the two Mandalorians. Let me know what you think in the comments. And these are the two Mandalorians we get, which they're not terrible minifigures. I'm not gonna 
even pretend that they're anything less than really good figures. You can see that the helmets have obvious differences. The left one is meant to represent a typical Mandalorian warrior and on the right we have a Mandalorian Night Owl which usually fought to protect the leader so I guess in this case they're probably fighting a lot closer to Bo-Katan and I think they're more protectors than they are warriors. Their job is more to protect than to just go out attacking like the ones on the left. But the helmets aren't the only differences. I'm not sure how many people will have noticed this. I didn't notice till I was putting the minifigures together and realised in the instructions they were different because the torso on the left is really the same to any of the torsos. Even if you look at Bo-Katan's torso and I'm sure any of the Mandalorians we got from the Cova in the previous Mando Battle Pack, they all look to be the same design on the left. But on the right, we have a different layout. It's much more rounded. We've got the paintwork sort of slimming as it gets to the bottom. And we've also got the printed hips on both of them. And even the belt is different. On the front, the belt is the exact same. But if I were to turn these minifigures around, you can see that they do have a jetpack. So Perhaps we'll take a look at that later. But the legs are also different. Everything is basically different about these, except for the shared blaster, the shared viewfinder, and the black head that they both have in common. But the armor on the Night Owl is a bit wider out, which I think also works with the in-universe Mandalorians, whereas the Mandalorian warrior on the left has a more front and central. Now you can see what I mean about the back now that I've taken the jetpacks off. There's slightly different scratch marks on it and it looks like the one on the left actually has some sort of creases in the back armour plate. But the Night Owl on the right also has a few less pouches than the Mandalorian Warrior. I guess if they're not fighting on the front lines and are more of protectors, they need to carry less things and stay agile. So that does also make sense. But I thought it was really interesting that LEGO have gone out of their way to create two very different minifigures. And we can actually take a look at these alongside nearly all the other Mandalorians we've got from the Mandalorian show. And they fit in so, so nicely. A few of these are missing their accessories, so you'll have to forgive me for that. But you can see we've got a few of the named characters. This is the older Paz Vizsla, but especially that fleet commander we got in the Fang versus Ty. They fit in so well with Bo-Katan's clan. And then we have all of the older Mandalorian figures, which I feel like are shown up by the newer ones we're getting. So I'd love to see the Cova revisited if we do see the sort of beat up troopers. Though I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of these style of Mandalorians going forward. And I can't forget about the new Mandalorian youngling, the new recruit, Grogu. And the instructions for his IG-12 mech have now been added to the members Discord. We all knew the minifigures were going to be amazing though, didn't we? But what about the wider set and more importantly the pieces used? The set itself reminded me when I was building it a lot of the Hoth Trooper Battle Pack which I do have to hand but you'll have to wait for a full comparison of all of the Battle Packs. And we get a few accessories which include this blaster turret which hopefully fires a lot, lot better than the one on the Rex Y-Wing. Actually, I still have the Rex Y-Wing to hand, so perhaps we can give it another go and redeem it from yesterday's video. And both of them actually did fire, but I think the problem with the stud shooters isn't specific stud shooters, but Rex's Y-Wing have these studs. Well, you've got no worries of that with this battle pack because they have the proper studs rather than the tiles, and they just fire so much better with the new stud fire missiles but i'm sure most of you will probably not be making use of that feature so we do have this really cool crate to display and i've seen so many people take crates and make their own from the 2024 battle pack and a few other sets and display them alongside ships they are such great display pieces especially alongside bigger ships and we've got our thermal detonator in there and if you did want to also store the extra stud you get for the blaster, I recommend clipping it to the top of this 2x2 two two, and then it can also fit in the crate and the top can fit flush with both of the different pieces inside. But this does have four studs on the bottom and they've actually raised it up so you can attach this really anywhere on the display or like Lego suggests, 
just have it spaced out in front and it really works with most displays. Now the actual build itself is a bit lacking. It does have, I wouldn't call this an interior, but it does have an alternate side, which does have a ranged weapon there, which is nice. You can switch up with your Mandos. And I think personally, this gun looks better in the Mandalorian Warrior's hands. And then you've got both of these blasters for the Night Owl. You see Koska Reef flying with them both. You also see a few others in the background having two of these smaller blasters. So I definitely think that looks a bit better for the minifigures. But then we've got the best play feature. I think this is one of the best play features in any of the battle packs. It's a bit awkward to do one handed on camera, but I have fiddled with this for so long and had so much fun with it. You can see you can actually fly the Imperial Commando around and give it a bit of a wiggle. And that is using the brand new display element that Lego have been using across many sets, especially all the superhero ones. Hopefully we get a few more in Star Wars sets because you've got things like the Jedi Force jump in so they can be displayed in the air. You've got so many minifigures with jet packs and jump packs and even some of the astromechs can fly themselves so we really need to see these pieces in more sets and hopefully this isn't the last time it's coming in a battle pack because if you do end up buying a load of sets they're mostly slopes let's take a look at the instructions here and if we flick to the back you can see most of the pieces are slopes that's not something that a load of people have probably been saying but genuinely most of the pieces that make this up are slopes and the ones that aren't are a few of the bigger plates. So you're not really going to see many alternate builds. You can combine multiple, which I think is really, really cool. They've shown not only it being combined with the bigger set, it's a bit pricey of a set. So I'm going to be waiting for that to go in a sale before picking it up. I'm not quite sure it's worth almost double what this is. I mean, it definitely looks it compared to the build of the set, but Perhaps if we got a few more minifigures and this became more of a diorama with an other side, it might have been a bit more appealing. But you can combine multiples of these. It's not just two. You can have a whole line of these on your shelf. And if you have a load of Mandalorian minifigures like I do, perhaps that's a great way to display them and just use them as a display piece. Because both sides have a clip element. You've got the bar joint here. And then you've got the clip on the other side. And if you didn't want the bar and clip on, Lego have made it so easy to pop off. This bar just pops off like that. Again, from the front, you can't see any different. It looks the exact same. And in this piece, it's a bit harder to do, but you can just pop off that corner slope. It looks a bit sleeker than before. And you could probably attach these pieces somewhere else. So if we take the one by one with the bar out, this slope can go up there and I'm sure you can make use of the other one. It's a bit hard to push down. If you didn't want to buy any more, you can still make it look just as cool without the bar pieces. I think many people building caves or building some rock walls will probably pick this up to sell the minifigures and basically get some free bricks. So do I recommend picking up the Ambush on Mandalore Battle Pack? Of course I do. Look at these figures. I really like the Imperial Commandos and I'm never upset about getting my hands on a few more Mandalorians, but how many do I recommend picking up? Well, I'm afraid I have to say no more than one. I don't think it's that worth it picking up multiples unless you really want to build an army of Imperial Commandos or Mandalorians. But even the Mandalorians, I don't think there's necessarily a need. It's not like Clone Troopers, Storm Troopers, where they all look basically the same. Mandalorians are so mixed, you could probably just grab a few of the parts, especially that Night Owl helmet, on Bricklink, Brick Owl, wherever you buy your secondhand Lego and use a few of the older pieces or perhaps you already have a load of the older Mandalorian battle packs, which is definitely a bit better than this for army building. But the minifigures here are amazing. Again, I'm a big fan of the Imperial Commando. The printing on all of these just never disappoints, does it, from Lego. And having looked in greater detail, I still think the Imperial Commando is the best part of the set. I love these minifigures. To be fair, the Mandalorians aren't bad either, but the fact that it's made up of slopes perhaps stops many people buying multiple of these. I'm sure the minifigures will still be available on the aftermarket for quite a reasonable price, especially considering this battle pack is at that higher price. So 
perhaps the figures are worth spending that bit extra. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to drop a like if you did enjoy and subscribe before you click off. And may the bricks be with you always.